right, uh, let's Jesus go ahead and call a uh, finance committee meeting to order for October 21st, 2024. Uh, a little after five, if you'll call roll, please. Yes, sir. Councilor Jones. Here. Waltney. Here. Alamon. Here. Smith. Here. Harden. Here. Full house. Wonderful. Everybody's here. All right, we have the uh, uh, committee uh, meeting minutes from October 7th. Uh, do we have a motion to dispense with a reading and approve them as distributed? Second. Okay, moved by Councilor Smith, second by Councilor Alamon. Any questions on that? Thank you for getting those out quickly. Yes, sir. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's five to zero. Okay, we, we have a, a pretty short agenda tonight, so um, we're going to start off with uh, old business, uh, 08 09 24. Uh, request to set bid date for October 29th for Fire Station 3 edition. Uh, coming to us from Chief Broadhead. And uh, just to refresh everyone's memory, uh, we. We have. Oh, here we go. So, oh, there, 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 there they are. That's even better. But I have to help you. Okay, it's a lot less yeah, messy. Um, so, uh, basically, we have the bid opening next week that. Councilor Smith is going to uh, to open those. Uh, we ke we kept this item within uh, finance uh, so that we could review the drawings and um, and uh, have questions on this. And so uh, we're we're here. I'm, I'm sure everyone has taken time last week to review these. So uh, if you want to go over anything, or if we we're just doing a small addition on the side of the station. Um, where we are going to house, so currently all of our turnout gear and all of our gym equipment is in the apparatus bay. With the new trucks that we have, when you pull it in, you have about eight inches on each side now. Um, they've gotten to where they have to pull the trucks out to open the doors, so we are moving all of that out of the apparatus bay into this addition. It will house a small gym, and then the turnout gear room will also be their storm shelter. So it's a reinforced shelter, poured concrete walls and top. And so that is, that's literally all we're doing, and it is extremely expensive, I think, for what it is, but hopefully the bids will come in a little bit cheaper. It is important to say that where we're working there, we are on swamp. It is that a classicized clay that they have to, that's why they think the price may come in so high. When we did the driveway in the back, we had to dig down pretty deep to get a strong footing done. So you'll notice in these plans, they actually have grade beams coming across, which should reduce that while keeping the structure stable. But it is a small gym, and a storage room that will also double as our storm shelter for the five people that are assigned to that station. Can I ask just a yes, couple of questions? Yeah. Um, so what what square footage are we getting from this? Brian, can you go to the, do you have the next one? All right, so. Whoa. I'll go to that side. Which way, back? No, go forward one, you just had it. You had it, yeah. No, one no. Oh, the other way. Yeah. All right, that cool. one. So we're looking right here and it is a 20 by, see where it is 42 I believe okay this is our equipment room that'll have our lockers on the outside that is our storage room and then the workout room there there you go. that is the addition to the station now we're trying to keep it under the original windows so that we're not affecting the current bay that's there or the roof line okay so, so that's 840 square feet and what was the estimated cost 4 to 425 wow yes, okay yes. so we're talking five hundred and six dollars per square foot. That is the that's a lot. I, I agree. <laughs> it, it came in when we originally started this. I was thinking we maybe the bids will come in cheaper. Um, we'll know when we open them, and it may be that it's just cost prohibitive and we don't do it. But it, well, and that let is me like so, um, and I'm not trying to be the well. I guess I am. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to trying to get my cut my teeth here. Um, so here's here's my general take on it. The, this the space that's actually what I can because you know, of course, this is taxpayer money that we're putting into this. The gym room looks to be the larger space, which to me seems like that's that should be maybe the less important thing. The, the problem is if we swap those two, this is a hardened structure. So the biggest cost there is reinforcing it to withstand so that, that it's, it. So that it's if a we storm. swap the two, that cost is gonna go up greatly. Okay, let me uh, ask this. Just, I guess, were there any other thoughts about the size of the workout room being less so that, 
I, I'm just trying to figure out if there's other ways or moving it somewhere, some some other configuration so that that so that we're not paying five hundred and five dollars per question. Square. Yeah, sure. Do we even need the workout room? And, and, and just only have the equipment room and the reinforced piece. I mean, I'm just asking, you know, in terms no, I'm of with you. So every thing. station we have has a gym of some sort in it. Um, with our physical fitness program, they are required every shift to work out for at least an hour every single shift. Um, we have tried subbing that out to gyms in the past. Keeping them in their territory is extremely tough. This one, we currently have it in the bay and it's a pull-out rack. It, it works, but it is not ideal. The reason we looked at this station for it versus anything in station two is to be dead honest, station two needs to be torn down and rebuilt. Correct. It's not worth putting any more money into it. Right. Um, I don't feel like in the near future we're gonna be looking at two fire stations because I know, you know, it's that's, I know the cost that takes. Yeah. So we're trying to make this one usable and last us into the future until we can get where we're looking at replacing it. Okay, let me ask uh, another question. Is there a way Because y'all do have the building out back, the training, training it's room, a classroom. a classroom, right? The training building. Is there a way that it could be expanded? Because I feel like, I mean, that's a metal construction building, so cost way less. Is there a way to put the gym facility there and then have the equipment room itself moved back toward the back of the building? And then you're spending whatever 20 i don't know how long that is so if it was say 20 by 20 which you, it's almost 20 by 20 because it looks almost like a perfect Six, square the equipment is 16 feet by oh, 20. okay all right so 20 by 18. 16. Oh, 18. Okay. sorry it's the inside inside so the outside right here is 20. he's, he's showing you the inside all right. at 18. So, so you know that's 360 square feet so my, my only concern there is i don't know to do any project, there's going to be a certain amount of cost associated with it. Well, sure. Um, and if we shorten it, I don't know that the cost is going to go down by that much. We can, I can definitely get the architects in if that's the questions we want, the scenarios we want to run. I, I just wonder, and okay, so also I'm seeing, is that a fuel tank? And so these generator? are already here. Our generator sits here, our fuel tank sits behind it. Oh. In this project, they are going to relocate the fuel tank from here to sit beside it so that we actually have the room to build that storage building on there. Okay, and I'm assuming that there would be a cost associated with relocating a fuel tank just right. based on environmental reasons and safety reasons. I assume there would be a cost associated so with that. So the pad location. is already there for the fuel tank because um, we were going to put it in a fueling station a couple years back, so literally the cost is going to be um, the machine to move it sideways. Okay. So it's a self-contained 250-gallon fuel tank that feeds our generator for that building. It does, right. it's not a fuel system, it's not a pump in it, it just it. feeds the generator for that building. Well, and that just also, I mean, cause that's carving, I mean, it may be a small cost, but that's carving, yeah, carving is, out a cost. a cost. If that building is not there, if the building is moved back, you don't have to relocate the fuel tank. So that would be some cost savings just to and start with. As far as adding to that metal building? Yeah. Kale, can I? I don't know. It, we, we would have to, I think we built about the biggest one we could there based on our runoff. Um, because it, metal Storm buildings water. are a lot cheaper than a sure. home structure. Sure, yeah, 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 right. But I think we were at the max, and we stopped with a 20-person classroom, which is enough to get one shift in. Right. And it has a small bay where we have a air compressors, washer and dryer for our turnout gear, things right. like that. Okay, so, I mean, I just, I think since we're having the we're uh -huh. having the bid opening a week from tomorrow, I think we'll just see what the bids are when they come in, and then if we need to. I'm good with that. Yeah, meet uh, with the architects yeah. and the see. others have questions. Yeah, I had a question. Yeah. So with this expansion and in general with the station itself and the condition that it's in how long how long do you see the station being usable well we actually took a tour of all the stations the other day and i will tell you guys that station two is the, the number one problem this one is going to need at the very least a plumbing update in the next five years which the plumbing's in the slab it is all clay plumbing and some of it has collapsed we have went around it as much as we can um, that was part of the reason with this addition that we don't have any plumbing in it to tie into it. Where it is there, I mean, we can make it last. It, it needs to be replaced in the next 10 years. This station does? I think so. But would some, of, would some of this money be better used trying to correct the sewer issue? Because that seems like a big deal. It, it absolutely would, but the problem is, is it's not half of what we're going to need there. Because they're going to have to completely gut to get to the sewer line 
what we did is we came in and PVC'd it up and over yeah. where it needs to be, where it was collapsed. To get to the sewer line, it is under the walls in the station. So we are going to have to go in and gut it, which includes the kitchen. It's under the cabinets, too. Um, we're going to have to go in and gut it and then turn around and redo it. So we, that is somewhere in the near future. Yeah. That is one of the things that we worked on the other day, but I don't know that we're... You know, and and, yes, and that goes back to, because I mean, these are all hard choices, right? Yeah. How we prioritize it. Because even if we build this, are we going to have to then get into any of these new facilities to get to the sewer later? We don't. I did, we did check that. So the sewer, we found the plans for Station 3. The sewer comes um, right here down the main part and goes directly out the back of the station into the swamp area behind, drops into the city sewers. So to redo the sewers in the station, these lines all come to the center, and then where my kitchen line there comes to the center, we would have to take out the dormitory back there, the kitchen cabinets and walls, and then this portion of the middle of the concrete slab. What I, what I heard you say, right, is that you foresee a future where perhaps fire station two goes away. Or it goes away. Yeah. Well, you said so that we will only need two fire stations. No? That's no. 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 That's no. Bye, sir. We will, I don't see how we would do with three. We, we working on potentially a fourth at one point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just I, I wanted to make sure that the clarification yeah. level, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I didn't, but I didn't now, just now, that now that fire station two, which is the one over by Publix, yeah. is by far the most outdated. It was, yeah, it was built in the 50s, the service station. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so small and very... Yeah. Yeah. As everybody recalls, every, every year at budget, you know how I praise the fire department. Why? Because we have a capital plan. Yes. A 20 Ten year, year, year plan. Tri capital plan. Mm -hmm. What I think would be really helpful for each department is to look at that same thing for your physical sure. building. Yes so that we know i mean we know fire station one because i you know it's in great shape it is but uh, a, a plan for for everything uh, and so that we can kind of look at it strategically and what we need to prioritize and things like that That'd which, be which uh, mr smith has said what we really need to do is an assessment of all of our city facilities because we have so yeah. many yeah. pieces out there that we really need a just like we need a fleet inventory which guess what Andy we're working on it he, be excited. Mr. Smith asked me to prepare kind of a st he asked me which one's the worst one what what is your immediate needs and station two is that it is that it for us yeah yeah this one I feel like unless we are ready to, to look at two stations we can keep this one going for a while um, he asked me to look back at what we spent on station two in the last couple years what we had budgeted going forward and there's a lot of money budgeted going forward that if we knew Hey, that station is going to be torn down and replaced in a year. We might. Not. I wouldn't spend. Sure. I would patch a roof and not replace the front doors that we have budgeted. Right. The electrical is in pretty bad shape, but too. Yeah. I would not rewire that station if I knew that it was you know, going to be at least two and a half years away from building one, even if we gave it today. Right. And we have sure. a site that could be. We we, had, we do have a site. I, I, I we want to discuss that just just to make sure it makes the best sense for the city as a whole because it is road frontage on Green Springs. Yeah. yeah. But we do have a site. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I also suggested it would be really great to find out what someone paid for the Asian market across the way, just because it's comparable in size and location. So it would be interesting to. They paid two hundred thirty thousand dollars for it. They paid two hundred thirty. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Wow. Yeah. So that's good to know um, because that, that <laughs> tells us. Yeah. So that tells us what you know. And, and I'm hoping the bids come in a little bit cheaper. That was just you know they always tend to estimate high because right. they want to come back and have a place to bid. I thought that was a little high myself, but then when I started talking about commercial construction, okay. yeah. To the others. Well, let's. I think like when we when we open those bids, we'll look at the bids and we'll see how they come yeah. in, and then we can discuss if we need to think about talking to the architects for some modifications. In the meantime, we are working on a, a presentation that'll include current conditions okay. and plans Good. for the future. All right, can I sounds ask great. A question about the construction. You obviously have a, a roof like this and a flat roof. How is it, how, do you know how, I know this might be a little beyond your knowledge right now, I mean, flat roofs leak over a period of time. So we left this, this would be a metal style roof and it would have enough that it wouldn't require the drains like a flat roof does. It was only, I think it was a two. So it was just at the bare minimum of what a metal would, could withstand. Uh, we could raise it slightly to get a little higher elevation, but then we would cut those windows out of the bay right. and that would have upped the cost as well. We were trying to keep below the windows so that we didn't have to block those in. Right. So we're not talking about a built-up roof. We're really talking about a metal roof that just a lean-to style roof has a little bit of. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay. Um, we'll, we'll carry this over for the bid opening and then we'll Thank you, Chief. discuss that. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. And if y'all have questions between, call me. <laughs> You brought the plans too, I so you can okay. spread it out the whole table here. Uh, okay, so we'll carry that over without objection. Uh, moving on to new business 110924, request for consideration for street light on Edgeview. Uh, public safety recommended this, I believe four to zero. Uh, and the request is to. Uh, it's to add a single street light. There's not one on the street at all. So they had requested two, but unfortunately there's no power on the front side. It's all in the alley. So uh, Mr. Hamley went out and checked and found a suitable location uh, on the street for a street light to get without having to add some actual <coughs> poles or underground power or anything like that. Is there, is there an update? I know we talked about just looking at things last time on Street View, whether or not we could tap onto a different pole or you would maybe suggest yeah, uh, Alabama Power relocation. Uh, can install it on the at and T pole there in the alley, mm. and uh, they could without, you said without having to uh, set any extra pole. Nice. So but isn't that way cost. down the street? Uh, it's about halfway. Is it? Let's see the AT and T pole. It's their chair right. Gonna be a yeah, little, it's right there. Yeah, right there. Right. Like right. fall off the street. They're gonna put a 15 degree bracket on it so it'll kind of like cast it shine, the yeah, shine outward. Is that gonna be yeah. effective? They seem to think so. <laughs> I mean, it, I could, I could uh, always talk to at t too about moving that pole up because it, it's probably been there since the dawn of time. If I had to guess, yeah, I mentioned that to Alabama Power, and she, you know, she didn't seem like at t would be willing to do anything. Let's get she's the right people. Screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're, you're just requesting to fund. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, what is the cost, Randy? Uh, 208, 208 92. Excellent. Uh, I would make a motion to approve uh, this adding the street light on Edgeview. That's for the year. Yeah. At 208.92, coming out of seven, no, seven, cents. seven cent gas tax. That's right. Do we have to sell this? Uh, as long as we get a resolution, they're good with that. Don't like sign it? No. Okay. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by Councilor Gwaltney. <coughs> Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's five to zero. That passes. Uh, last item 021024, request for consideration for the city to take over maintenance and service costs for three street lights in Gadsby. Is that that private street? Over, yeah, over off um, West Shape. So, yeah, yeah. We're going to need to carry this over. Uh, Alabama Power has went out and looked at the three street lights. Currently, they're uh, powered by the residents. Uh, they're, you know, it's on well, their power bill. So uh, they're going to have to go in and disconnect their power and then uh, run it into the main, of, you know, on Alabama Power side. So it, it's going to be some cost on the front end to, to get that done. Is there a HOA? It's private street. Uh, from our understanding, there was a HOA about 30 years ago. I think we no took over road. the street, right? Didn't we? That's what I we accept. I think we accepted the yeah, street. Yeah, but we never took over the street lights. Um, no, no, no. But yeah, but I, I guess I'll, I'll just say, for what it's worth, I, I have a concern about us taking over private. What is a private subdivision? Just because right. we've had one in our particular neighborhood that had some activity in it that required police and fire to show up about a year and a half ago and we had a bunch of residents there ask about that during that time and it was it, it wasn't maybe as favorable from the city standpoint in terms of who's going to cover the costs ongoing and they wanted their lights upgraded and things in there so yeah. I just don't know about the precedent that it sets but if it's something that's palatable to everybody else then I think we need to have that discussion about other other areas too. And I assume you're gonna come in and tell us what that upfront cost is gonna be to do all of that. And, well, and if we control the streets now, isn't that what we're really lighting? <coughs> the streets? I mean I, I, don't I mean know I think JJ do we do we is it did we accept that street, JJ? 
in Gatsby? Did we, did we ever say that church? Oh. Gatsby and Zelda. Yeah, Gatsby and Zelda. Yeah. Well, I think we need to find that out for in the first place because if they're not our streets, right. then Mission. we don't need to be paying to light them because yeah. they're not ours. And y'all just want to clarify, but it looks like they're acorns and it's all yeah. berry power. So any future additions would be really expensive. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll wait to find like out. Acorn style. Oh. Ward five style. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, no, I'm just sitting here thinking Devin's going to show up. The fancy lights. They don't have the fancy lights. I'm just thinking. <laughs> I we, we got some, you we gotta got, talk my language. No, we got some. Gotta some, have my yeah. language. We got some free yeah. stuff. Got you. All right. I mean, <laughs> so uh, so we'll carry this over without objection. Yeah. Yeah. Alternative yeah. Alternative yeah. Alternative yeah. Alternative yeah. Alternative yeah. Alabama Power Yes. I was just gonna say too. I mean, you know, I, we're gonna carry it over, and I think getting the cost and some additional details is great. Um, because, but it is, it is a good consideration to evaluate these things because. We don't have an HOA for 30 years, but we have people, you know, living on, you know, city paying city taxes, property taxes. They expect similar services as the rest of the city, and you know, we just have to kind of evaluate, you know, wh how we're going to handle those. I agree with consistency, but I mean, if there's not an HOA and there hasn't been one, then, you know, is is there not one? I mean, wouldn't yeah. that be up to the HOA to decide whether they're going to? Defunct and, and I don't think you can just say stop. you don't have an HOA anymore because isn't it a state? It's in the subdivision regulation. Yeah, so they technically have one still. They're just not active. Yeah. Right. They're not paying their dues. So, so, so. Because we, we were placed, we, we did something about the sign over there. We did. Yeah. Yeah. A couple years ago. And I think that, all oh, I remember about that, that was working yeah, in the right of way. Yeah, and, yeah, it was working the right of way. No. Yeah. Well, I think they, they were did it themselves. Yeah, they did. I think yeah. they, yeah, they did. and actually, I think the HOA, HOA person was the one who came and talked to us. I, I think, think right. in my memory. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Perfect. We'll carry it over and we're adjourned.